Other situations include grandparents, very well-intentioned grandparents wanting to help out the, their grandchild that they know has special needs. Oftentimes we'll see you know, a, a specific gift of $20,000 that goes directly to the child. Well, if it goes directly to the child and your child's on the deeming waiver, you've lost the deeming waiver until that money's dealt with. So uh, these are all situations that, that need to be addressed. Sometimes other family members or friends want to include the special needs child in their planning. And if they leave it directly to the child, they're going to cause problems. And the money that they want to help the child winds up actually causing more problems, oftentimes more problems than it's worth depending on the size of the gift again. The other issue now is estate recovery. About a year ago, Medicaid sent out letters to everybody, and I know all those who received the deeming waiver were also getting these letters. It was causing a great deal of confusion because it was addressed to the parents. And it said, upon your death, we have a claim for whatever money we have spent on the Medicaid recipient. And parents were like, now wait a minute, I thought they weren't including my assets. And I was at a presentation similar to this up in Rome, and the person speaking before me was a, a representative from SSI. And she was explaining that, yes, we are going to collect, when you pass away, we're going to collect from your estate up to the amount that we have paid for your child. That is absolutely wrong, but boy, it set me up really nicely. <laughs> Everybody in the room was like, oh, what do we do, what do we do? She was inaccurate. She did not understand what estate recovery means. Estate recovery goes against the assets of the Medicaid recipient. So Medicaid has an automatic lien on the estate of everybody who ever receives Medicaid. This includes mom in the nursing home. This includes you know, your child on the deeming waiver. Uh, so one way to avoid estate recovery is not having any assets in the estate of the Medicaid recipient, which further argues why you should not have any assets in the name of the child with special needs, rather have it in a trust. Assets in the trust, in a special needs trust, are not in the estate of the beneficiary. So I hear other attorneys say, well, you know, the house is not a cannibal resource, so you can leave your child the house. They're absolutely right. You can leave the child the house. It's not a countable resource so long as the child can live there. Well, what happens if the child can't live there anymore? It becomes a countable resource. What if we have to sell the house? It becomes a countable resource. What happens if the child passes away? Estate recovery. They take the house. So there's a way around it. Uh, any assets that are in the name of the Medicaid recipient are what is subject to estate recovery.